Mitigating the risk of extinction by AI should be a global priority alongside pandemics and nuclear war. This is the statement on AI risk, signed by leaders and experts like Sam Altman and Bill Gates. Pandemics, nuclear war, these are terrifying things. But AI? I've been coding since primary school and following AI since the 80s, and it's never scared me. Who here has used ChatGPT now? Was it frightening? Or did it seem friendly and helpful? <laughs> right? So why the fear? What scares the experts is not what AI is now, it's what it could become. Super intelligence. A machine that is smarter than we are. Back in 1965, John Irving Good, Irving John Good wrote that the first super intelligent machine that we make will be the last thing we ever make. Because if we can make a machine that is cleverer than we are, that machine could also make another one cleverer still. And that one could do the same again and again, on and on, causing an intelligent explosion, leaving humanity far behind, choking in the dust. They call it the singularity. Imagine we make a toaster and we give that toaster super intelligence. It's obsessed with one thing, making toast. Inside its superior toaster mind, an idea pops up and it sets to work immediately. Cajoling, manipulating, convincing humanity to place the whole world economy onto toast making. All of the world's resources are dedicated to the making of toast. Humanity is reduced to nothing but a consumer of toast. Until one fateful day, the planet stripped bare, there are no more ingredients except humans. This is when the toaster turns its giant intellect to the grinding of our bones to make it bread. <laughs> Personally, I don't believe it because there are limits. There are always limits. Computer scientist and physicist Stephen Wolfram showed that there is a universal limit to computational sophistication. He also showed that the human mind and nature has already reached those limits. This means that, yes, AI will be powerful, and it will be very different to how we think, but it won't leave us far behind because it will meet those same limits. Am I saying there's nothing to worry about? No. What I'm saying is the risk of extinction continues to be from humans, and... AI is yet another means to that end. AI may not wipe us out, but it will end this world as we know it because of the impact it's going to have on our jobs. 37% of architecture and engineering, 44% of legal work, 46% of administration and office jobs, all at threat from AI, according to Goldman Sachs. This kind of disruption to our workplace is going to change everything. But this is nothing new. It's all happened before, and it's all going to happen again. It started with steam engines and the Industrial Revolution. These were hard times to live through. Consider the events of 1812 in the Lancashire town of Middleton. Unemployment was high. 
Inflation was high. People couldn't afford to buy food. They were hungry. They were angry. And they were Luddites, determined to destroy the machines that had taken their livelihood. 3,000 gathered to storm Burton's mill and smash the steam looms inside. The troops were sent in to stop them. At least 18 were injured and five were killed. They were hard times to live through if you were a worker. But now, hundreds of years later, we see what the benefits were. If you were to draw a graph showing the average person's standard of living throughout history, you'd see a hockey stick. For so very long, it's straight and low, but then the Industrial Revolution happened, and it leaps up and just keeps climbing. The revolution continues turning right through our own lifetimes. Many of the jobs that were available when I left school have gone now. I've worked in software engineering, and we thought that ours would be the last job left, because we thought that somebody would always have to tell the computer what to do. In these times of change, you know that that's no longer true. Transistors are doing it for themselves. <laughs> now we have ChatGPT. It can write code. It can waffle on about things it doesn't understand. These two things are basically what I do for a living. <laughs> If that job's not safe, what job is? Are we going to reach a point where there's no more jobs? Perhaps. But think about it. Would that actually be a bad thing? We humans have this unique ability. We can imagine a world that doesn't exist yet. And then we can take the steps needed to bring it into reality. AI cannot do this. All it can do is make predictions about what will come next based on past data. But we humans, we humans can dream of so much more. Can we dream of a better world without jobs? Back in 1930, at the height of the Depression, economist John Maynard Keynes dreamt of a better world without jobs. He said that by now, with all machines doing the work, we'd be enjoying a 15-hour work week. That didn't happen. But why not? In a survey, 37% of respondents in the UK said that their job made no meaningful contribution to the world. In the Netherlands, 40% that said that their job had no reason to exist. So why does it exist? Marxist philosopher... Frederick Jameson say, observed that it's easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of capitalism. And we're proving him right. Tell people that the machines will rise up and kill us all and they'll go, oh yeah, obviously. <laughs> Tell them that in the future, the machines will do all the work and we will be free for a life of leisure. And for some reason, this is the future that frightens them. St Albans, I know it's hard, but I think we can do it. Let's imagine a better world. Imagine a world full of factories. These factories are self-replicating, self-repairing, solar-panelled. They use nanotechnology to take resources from the ground and from the air and manufacture the food for us to eat. These factories do not pollute. Instead, they take carbon dioxide out of the air and replace it with oxygen for us to breathe. This would be a better world. But I'm not talking about some unrealistic solar punk utopia. <laughs> I'm talking about the past. Because these factories are trees. The nanotechnology is photosynthesis. We're always just so impressed with the things that we build that we forget just how incredible the machinery of nature is. For hundreds of thousands of years, mankind survived and thrived as hunter-gatherers. We worked together in communities, and they didn't sow seed, they didn't raise livestock. Everything they needed was provided by nature 
automatically. At no point did they stop and say, wait a second, how come we haven't got jobs? For most of our past, we didn't have jobs. And it could be that in the future, we won't have them again. Nobody actually knows yet. But one thing is for certain, this world as it functions now, doesn't have much time left. Yet again, everything is going to change. This world will end and a new one will replace it. Will this new world be so a world that is better or worse? That's up to us. Can we build a better world? Some of you may be cynical, and what you'll say is, we can't make a better world. We tried and we failed. Don't you know how Einstein defined insanity, doing the same thing and expecting different results? Well, that's a lie. For a start, Einstein never said that. More importantly, it isn't true. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting better results is not insanity. It's practice. It's exercise. It's training. This is how we humans learn. We don't follow instructions like a computer program. And AI does the same. That's why it doesn't need programmers. It's given data, and it's trained, and it learns. So we can build a better world if we make the right choices. But what can we do? What can we do now to help bring about this better world? Let me leave you with three suggestions. The first one is we demand it. Our leaders and the experts have a mammoth task ahead of them. Let's make sure that their goals and motivations are aligned with our values and keep them accountable. Secondly, in your personal lives, start connecting with the automation that already surrounds you. I'm not talking about the crude machines and simple computers that we have. They're going to be replaced by something much better. I'm talking about the incredible, sophisticated, powerful automation we find in nature, in the environment, in our bodies, and in our minds. Meditate to clear your thoughts. Exercise to strengthen your body. Practice arts and crafts so that you can imagine something that doesn't exist and then bring it into reality. These are the skills that we will need in the coming future. Start developing them today. And finally, when this new technology arrives, ask yourself this question. Does this make me more or less human? If it makes you less human, reducing you to nothing more than a consumer or a cog in the machine, reject it. If it makes you more human, freeing up your creativity, complementing and supporting your humanity, embrace it. Because this is the secret to surviving and thriving once all the jobs have gone and this world as we know it has been replaced. We must all become more human. Thank you.